Happy Earth Day! This is Stephanie from Apex Languages with another Grown Up Grammar. Today, we're going to continue our discussion on questions by talking about interrogative pronouns. Last time, I introduced the question words. That's who, what, when, where, why, and how. I talked about how some of them are pronouns and others are adverbs. The adverbs, when, where, why, how, we talked in detail. I showed you how to move them to the front of your sentence. Even, um, you know, you, you put the verb in front of the noun and you put the question word in front of that verb and you've got yourself a question, inversion. Well, today we're gonna focus on the pronouns instead. How do you form questions with them? Some of it is similar, some of it is different. So here we've got our chart of pronouns and our interrogative ones. Interrogative, again, means, you know, having to do with questions. To interrogate means to ask questions, uh, usually in a bad way, um, when you're interrogating a prisoner or someone uh, that you think committed a crime but interrogative, just having to do with questions. You can see here, we've got what, we've got who, and we've got a couple of extras too. So let's go into more detail. The first thing you're probably wondering is, what's with all the who's? We've got who, whoever, whom, whomever, who's and who's ever. What do they all mean? I'll try to address ever next week, so don't worry about it too much right now. It's a useful suffix that can also attach itself to what and which. But the other variations are just different forms of the same pronoun that change depending on how they're used in the sentence. Who is used for the subject, whom the object, and whose is possessive. You know, uh, something is owned by something else. By object, I mean direct object, indirect object, or object of preposition, any of those. This is the same exact thing that happens with the personal pronouns. So, I, me, my, he, him, his. I and he are both subjects, so I like ice cream. But the object, ice cream does not like me. Get away from my ice cream. You do the same thing with who. Old English used to do this with all of its nouns. There are plenty of other languages that still do, like Russian. But this system simply died out in English um, as the language simplified to deal with mass Viking immigration. Who, whom, just like he and him, are living dinosaurs. That being said, the simplification process of English is still going on today. And you can see that continued evolution in the fact that whom is actually disappearing from our language as well. Many native speakers don't use it at all. They don't know how to use it. Instead, they just use who for everything, whether it's the subject or the direct object. I'm going to teach you the official rules here so that you know them and you can use them in formal situations like to impress potential employers. But when in doubt, I always advise my students uh, to play it safe and just use who. And whose, you still have to use that one. Uh, regarding the possessive, one more important note is not to confuse whose with the contraction who is, which is also pronounced whose, yay. Uh, this is the same issue students have uh, with its and its, right? Um, if there's an apostrophe, it's a contraction. The subject and verb are combined into one word. So its on the top means it is. But with no apostrophe, it's the possessive. Um, so, who's on the top is who is, who, who's there, who is there, okay, uh, whose ice cream is this, okay, the ice cream belongs to who, so on the bottom it's possessive, okay, it has to do with ownership, whose computer is that, it's the teacher's computer, it's the computer belonging to the teacher, let's look at some more examples, who likes whom, okay, who here is the subject, likes whom, okay, my direct object. A lot of times you'll hear who likes who. 
But again, official rules, who likes whom? You fed whom that? Now I've got my indirect object. So you fed what that to whom? Indirect object. Who gave whose gift to whom? We don't like big sentences with lots of <laughs> question words like that, but who is my subject? Whose gift, the gift belonging to whom, right? So possessive, to whom? In this case, whom is the object of the preposition? So now that we've got who out of the way, let's talk about what and which. What do they mean? Well, it's easier to talk about what is not, okay? Who is, describes things that are human, okay? Who did this? Well, it could be me, it could be you, it could be him, it could be her, but it's a person. Very, you know, once in a while, maybe a pet, but usually we're talking about human beings as opposed to things. Which is used to describe, you know, things in general, but when you only have a limited number of items to choose from. So maybe there's two options, or maybe there's 10 options. Okay, what is for things that are not human and you could pick anything. You're not limited at all. What is just general? What is the uh, is the leftover option, right? Once you check off those boxes, well, it's not a human and there's no specific limit set. I'm not focusing on, I only have to pick one out of these options and use what? When in doubt, use what? So you can see here, what do you like? Which do you like? Whom do you like? If you were to say, whom do you like? Okay, what person do you like? You're, okay, which do you like? I'm giving you an option between vanilla ice cream, chocolate ice cream, or strawberry ice cream. Which do you like? You only have three options. But if I say, what do you like? That's when I'm looking at a menu and I've got 50 different things I could pick anything, right? Which has to do with a limited selection. I'm saying you you just have to pick which of the desserts. You don't get to look at the entire menu, focus on just the desserts. Okay, which one will you pick? As opposed to what would you like? Tell me, tell me anything, what would you like? Okay, very general. Now, finally, we can see how these interrogative pronouns are used to create questions. Here's a basic uh, statement, regular statement in English. I gave him that. I gave that to him. Remember, with our indirect object, either put the indirect object in front of the direct object or convert it into a prepositional phrase. So we've got two sentences. They mean the same exact thing. So I gave him that, I gave him that present, you can see in the picture. Who gave him that? If you want to turn a statement into a question using an interrogative pronoun, if the pronoun is your subject, you don't have to do anything because your question word is already the first word in the sentence. So you don't have to move anything around. I gave him that. Who gave them gave him that? Easy. Isn't that wonderful? Who gave him that? Who gave that to him? Which gave him that? So which parent gave him the present, right? Because I'm choosing, if I'm saying which, then I'm choosing between two options. So which gave him that? Which gave that to him? What gave him that? What gave that to him? You see, I had to change my picture here because what gave him, well, it can't be the parents anymore. Maybe a monster could be described using what, but here I'm saying the chicken gave him chicken pox. Doesn't work that way, <laughs> but um, all right. So the virus gave him those symptoms. What, so you're not talking about people anymore. You're saying something that's not human gave him that, okay? What gave him that? What gave that to him? So those are the subject pronouns. Let's look at the possessive. 
whose chicken gave him that that disease right well whose is again being used as an adjective so it's going to follow the rules of whatever part of speech the noun is so here chicken is my subject whose is attached to chicken so it's part of that subject phrase it's not going anywhere again nice and simple direct objects on the other hand create more of a problem or other objects okay the objects are, are difficult so I gave him what if I use inflection I can make this a question but I gave him what you have a question but it's a question that emphasizes a surprise or doubt or even fear right if you want a neutral question you're gonna have to go back to, I'm sorry to inversion again so remember the difference between inflection and inversion when you're creating different questions we've talked about these uh, in the past two videos as well I gave whom that so um, this would be the indirect object okay i gave who that i gave whom that any object is going to have the same pattern so let's practice that inversion process so the first thing is adding in that invisible do or in this case past tense did i did give whom that okay our verb needs to switch with the subject so we have did i give whom that Okay, you've got yourself a question, but the next part is putting our question word at the very beginning. And so our final question is, whom did I give that? This is a grammatically correct sentence now, but it does sound a little awkward because most native speakers would actually prefer the version with the preposition phrase so I gave that to whom I did give that to whom okay you switch those did I give that to whom and then whom did I give that to if you know grammatically you could argue that the prepositional phrase is to move all is supposed to move all together and your sentence should read to whom did I give that but native speakers like to leave that preposition at the end for whatever reason so really you're just moving the question word to the front and your final sentence would be whom did i give that to don't worry if you've got the two just hanging out at the end some old school grammarians would be very upset but really that's how people speak that's how english prefers it so I showed you using the indirect object, which is the most awkward, the most challenging to, uh, to do correctly. Now let's practice with some of the other pronouns. So if I answered your question, I gave him a chicken, what was the original question? Okay, replace a chicken with a pronoun to make it a question. What would you do? what did you give him right what did you give him because i gave him what not good enough i gave him what the 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 the, the you have to put in your ghost do put that at the beginning of the sentence and then what i gave him what well put the question word at the beginning and you get what did you give him let's do another one I gave him the black one. What's my question? Which one did you give him? Okay, I gave him the black one. That means that there's more than one type running around. Okay, one. Uh, so uh, I'm being specific of the chicken here. Which one? Okay. Um, so you could say which did you give him or which one did you give him? Because again. We need that ghost do to uh, move that to the beginning of the sentence. And then my question words goes in front of the do. Which one 
did you give them? Write to me some more questions. Make up your own question, post it in the comments, send me an email, and practice using these. All right? They're tricky, but you know, the more you practice, the better you'll get. And I'll leave you to it. Thank you as always for watching. Check out more videos at apexlanguages.com. Have a wonderful, healthy, safe day.